I am a little sweaty. Just a little, just a touch. Just a touch. We just finished a four mile walk through downtown Louisville. It was awesome. Beautiful. But I learned that Florida doesn't own humidity. No, there's some in Kentucky. They got some. Yeah. Welcome to Kiddo on the Couch, episode 132. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are two, two crazy, crazy kiddos. kiddos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome. If you're new here, say hi down below. Now here on Two Crazy Kiddos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So there do want to apologize for the bugs, the noise. There's a lot of grasshoppers. There's a lot of grasshoppers and locusts or cicadas, whatever they are. Yeah. But inside's kind of noisy because we've got Bronson and we've got Lynette. It's a house party. It's a house party and we're having such an awesome time here at Keto Palooza in Louisville, Kentucky or Louisville. Kentucky. I I've, I've renamed it to Autumn is Awesome Land. Yes. Because then I will never mispronounce it. Yep. And in Autumn is Awesome Land, yep. there's so much to do. Yes. Worth a visit if you've never been here before. This is our first time. Yeah. Now I did talk to her when we were walking because we were at the house the other night for a barbecue and it was awesome to watch Dr. Barry throwing a football with Mama Chris. Well, Miss Chris was actually throwing it to him and she's got an arm that on her. That woman, she can throw like a, a tight cannon. spiral. You need to get some lessons from her. I'm telling you what. But Autumn was telling us about this outbuilding that she's got and it was, I guess, a kennel from the previous owner and she's never been in it. And I asked her today when we were walking, what would the rent be? And she's like, if you guys want to go in there and clean it out, you can live there for free. I'm so So in. we're ready to move. She has a breathtaking view from her, her back porch. Her, her backyard is absolutely gorgeous. Peach trees. She said, I think she said walnut trees. A little, a little bridge. It, it is kind of buggy out here, isn't it? It's super mosquito -y. We're, we're going to get through it. But we're having such a good time. And uh, we're excited. We're trying to enjoy all the food tonight. We're going to be going out with a whole group of the WAC fam and the two crazy ketos Just meat fam. heads. Family. Just family. And, and we're going to be going out for some Brazilian barbecue. And we enjoyed some jalapeno poppers yesterday. Are they prepared for us though? No. Has someone called ahead to the restaurant and be like, you don't know the keto family no. and how much meat we can put down uh, they better just close down the restaurant whatever right you purchased buy more double it okay so i i'm i don't know who all is going i'm not sure either but i'm sure you're going to get challenged by somebody because they, i've met a lot of people I that don't believe that you can take them down. for anybody that's trying to come like and challenge me to any type of meat eating competition now we are trying to get all our jalapeno poppers and all of our other stuff in yeah because tomorrow tomorrow we're starting well after we leave but we're going to start our beef butter bacon and egg challenge now this is something that we are doing for no ourselves we are not making it. it a community challenge though a lot of people have mentioned they would like to join us we are going to attempt we're gonna do our best at vlogging our food every day. This is not one hour vlogs. We can do hard things. But we're going to try to film our food every day. Now if you wanna know what the beef butter bacon and egg challenge is, it's a challenge that Dr. Barry has, but we're gonna shorten it to just 25 days because we are going to Vegas in the middle of October. So we're, we're basically doing it in between trips, which if you're interested, we are going to be at the Las Vegas Keto Convention all of the information is down below signing up is all down below we're gonna be there and we're really excited to meet as many people as possible we just found Eva, out autumn is going to Las be Vegas. there right yeah. autumn is gonna be there uh erica from a uh, beautiful girl gone keto is gonna be there so nicole we're gonna, burgess nicole burgess is speaking maria emmerich is speaking so we're really excited about going so if you're interested there is a link for that down below so in the meantime from one conference to the other, we're gonna do 25 days of beef, butter, bacon, and egg. We did sit down with Dr. Barry. He actually jumped in on our live stream the How other day. How fun was that? We got some clarification. So here's what he said. You can have beef, butter, 
bacon slash pork right and egg so what he means by slash it sounds better to say bacon yeah but you can have any kind of pork so long as it's zero carb well it's not like we're going into beef and i mean beef is like covering the whole multitude it's of things the whole it's like, thing you're not breaking it down like beef. hamburger it's like when we would go into the dollar tree and still ask the attendant like how much is this a yep. dollar yep. it's all a dollar it's everything all a dollar. you're picking up is a dollar so what can you have you can have beef butter pork and eggs yeah does that mean you can have chicken we asked him he said no why because he said chicken's too lean you can have beef butter pork and eggs you can have seasonings within reason like you can have as much salt as you want the other seasonings you got to limit because you got to make sure you're having zero carb seasoning so you want to put a little dust of garlic powder so no butt rubs that's okay. and all that but you can't go in there and eat cloves of garlic you want to use Redmond's organic season salt. That's a great one. They're lemon pepper. You can have a little bit of that. You can have mustard, but you can't go and have barbecue sauces and ketchups so and things that are very high carb. We're looking for a zero carb meal or as close to zero carb as, as possible. possible. So he's allowing one cup of coffee a day. So, but I think I can do it. Okay. Like I can do hard things. Now, wait, I do want to say he's not, a, it's not that he's allowing. Right. This is what he's suggesting. He's suggesting. You can do what you want. He said to me, Joe, you're an adult. Do what you want. But, but I the feel idea like is to limit everything to make it zero carb. He's the professor. So I'm going to follow the syllabus. Yes. Of like what the outline of what he's kind of said is. We're not going to use the cliff notes. No, we're going to, we're going to do it right. So that's why we ask him all of those questions. So no stevia no sweetener of anything you know any any part you could probably you could put an egg in your coffee you're gonna put egg in your cream coffee. it up you could put butter butter you can have all of that stuff now again what One he cup said of to coffee. me i said joe i said can i have some redmond relight with the sweetener i'm officiating and he said joe you're an adult you could do whatever you want is it going to hurt you if you have one or two of those in the day, no, they are zero carb. But he's like, I really believe, Joe, that you can go 25 days without any stevia. I'm not telling you to give it up forever. He's like, let's see, if you can you go 25 days? And here's the thing. If you can go three weeks with doing something, you could make It'll it become a, a habit. habit. I call it, it's a holy habit. It's a holy point, habit. Right? So if you can do it for three weeks, you know you can do it. If you can give up Zevia for three weeks, not saying I have to give it up the rest of my life, but at least I know, you know what, Joe, you accomplished something. And that's why we're doing, we're doing this for number one, we want to challenge ourselves. Can we not eat any cheese? That's going to be the hardest for me. Any no jalapenos. Cheese, no jalapenos. No cream cheese. For just 25 days. And see, can I do it? Also, we want to prove a point. It's okay to eat meat. Now, the rest of this challenge, here's the rest of it. You can eat as much as you want, as many times a day as you want, so long as you're only eating beef, beef butter, butter bacon, bacon, or pork, and eggs. eggs. So you can eat as much. So macros, toss them out the window. The only thing I want you to do is make sure you're getting enough protein. So if your grams of protein is 130 grams, make sure you're getting 130 grams but you can get 500 grams if you can eat it. You can get 500 grams of fat if you can eat it. Dr. Barry's whole point is, you if you did this for 90 days, you will not gain 10 pounds of fat. You will not gain 10 pounds of may, fat. May gain muscle. May gain muscle. Bone density. You may gain bone density, but you will not gain fat. You're gonna see some body recomposition if you choose to join us. Now, if you can't give up stevia and you're gonna have a cup of coffee, you're gonna limit yourself to a cup of coffee, and the only way you can have that coffee is a couple drops of stevia. Do what you need to do, but try to limit all of your food to beef, butter, bacon, pork, if you're joining us. Well, what is interesting about it is, man, the excuses went right out the window when he said, Joe, you're an adult. Yep. And I think that you can go 25 days without this. Yes. And it's kind of like the moment he says that, it's like, don't say I can't. You don't want to look him in the eye and be like, well, I don't think I can do that. Really? Yep. Well, I don't think that, I, I think that you can. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was just like, okay. Yeah. And I'm going to try hard. You know what? I'm going to use keto chow electrolyte drops. I'll, I have a little bit of the Redmond unflavored. Well, we'll go ahead and use that. We're going to use lots of salt. Now, if I, I'm going to be honest. If I have a day 
and I'm on the field and I feel like, oh my gosh, I need something. And the only thing available to me is a packet of Redmond. I may do it, but I'm going to try to bring keto chow electrolyte drops with me. I'm going to bring stuff. I'm going to make sure I have some salt with me. And I'm going to try hard. And the two things that are going to be difficult for me, I'm curious, what is going to be difficult for you? For me, two difficult things is giving up my Zevia and giving up well, and electrolytes and giving up cheese. That's going to be hard for me. Mine is going to be a zip fizz. I'm used yeah. to having a zip fizz yeah, and I enjoy, I, my zip fizz. I enjoy I enjoy the flavor of it and and everything. So I think that's going to be the biggest challenge because I I've really, you know, drilled down and you know, reined back my coffee consumption yep. recently. So I don't think that that will be the number one challenge like in the past that's the number one challenge yeah. always is like to try to do less coffee. But I've already kind of worked it down, so that won't be the the challenge. I think it will be the um the zip fizz and then also i don't think i realize how much dairy i consume because yeah, i'm always thinking that joe is the cheese guy and and i can do without dairy but we've never i've never done this again before. nothing wrong with dairy if your body can handle it my body can handle cheese yeah okay? i don't do well with heavy whipping cream but i do well with cheese i was talking to bronson he's like i eat six seven eight ounces of cheese a day it's like you can have cheese but I'm interested to see what, what does my body do when I take a break from it. Rachel was shocked to see what happens when she went from two pots of coffee a day to a cup a day. Yeah, right? big, it, big difference. Huge difference. So we're excited about all of the things coming. And here's the thing, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure you hit the bell button so you're notified when we upload videos because we're gonna do a lot of barbecuing. You yeah. wanna learn how to use your Blackstone? We're gonna be cooking outside, because it's still hot in South Florida. It is. We're gonna be cooking on the smoker, we're gonna be cooking on the Rectech, and we're gonna be cooking on my brand new grill. I haven't even gotten it, it's been delivered, I'm gonna have to put it together, so we're gonna have a whole video on that. I got the Kamado Joe grill. Because it has so Joe in it. We're gonna do some barbecuing on that. We've got some bacon we're gonna be smoking. We've got some really cool recipes using just beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. But I do have a bone to pick with you before we go to a commercial. Why? We're starting beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, and you bought me a creamy. I know. I, the timing couldn't be worse. But if I had waited until There wouldn't be any left because everybody's buying them? Well, if I had waited until November, December, you would have bought it yourself. Well, that's true. There's no way that you weren't going to buy it yourself. Yes. And so I wanted to be the, like, let me have one appliance that I got it. it for you as a present before you bought it for yourself. Now, if you like cream in your coffee, you can still have it. But yeah. here's how you're going to have it. You're going to take your coffee and mm -hmm. we're going to work on, we're going to play with the creamy during this fast. We're going to take coffee and we're going to blend in some butter because mm -hmm. I can have butter. Yeah, you can. I can have eggs, yes. which means I can blend in a raw egg. And I know that sounds disgusting, it but you can good. ask Rachel, when you put that egg in a cup of coffee, in a blender, Turns and that, into cream. it emulsifies, it is creamier than having a heavy whipping cream coffee. It's actually even like frothy. So here's the thing. We are speaking at Keto Palooza in just two hours. So we need to get through the comments. There oh, is a fly, fly right on, the on the lens. Uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break and come right back with all of the comments, the Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week, and the Subscriber of the Week. And we're back. So we're going to start right off with this week's Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week, and this week's is Sherry McClure. Hey, Sherry. She put up this nice, simple post. It said, your story could be the key that unlocks someone else's prison. So don't be afraid to share it. Oh my goodness, is that, that not is awesome? so beautiful. And it's true. And we're really seeing that here at Keto Palooza. So many stories. And as they share, people are like, their eyes are widening like, wait a second. I haven't even thought about keto speaking to this situation, right? right? Like it's almost like, okay, we got to go harder. We got to go deeper into this. Or I have a family member that I could speak to about this because now I have not even like a, a written down Facebook post, but this is a live person right. that I have met that has this situation going on and, th and keto can speak to it. Yeah. And if you weren't at Keto Palooza, we're giving a talk in two hours on the sustainability of the proper human diet. And the last thing we talk about, like how do we keep keto, how do we make it sustainable? And that is 
you need to share your story. You do. And you're not just sharing your story for other people, but you're sharing your story for yourself. Yeah. Because every time you tell your story, you're able to look back and be like, oh, that's where I was. And I was just talking in there while you were upstairs on the phone with Miriam, and we were talking about you. And not even hey. about your weight loss. Mm -hmm. But last night, at Keto Palooza, there was a karaoke thing. No, I did not sing. So Chris did. Everything he still worked. No glasses were broken when I tried to sing. But this young lady did get up and sing. Tonight is super trooper. Kids are gonna fly me, but I won't be soon. Like I always do. Cause somewhere in the crowd there's me. It was fun and she sang so beautifully. But it wasn't even the beauty of your singing. The that fact got that I could me. do it. It was the fact that you got up there and you did it and you were singing and you were singing to the people who were in the virtual audience and you were pointing at the camera. And I was sitting there going, three years ago. No chance. There was no way you were doing that. It's actually no. four years now. No. There was no way you were doing that. You would Depression, have been vomiting. You anxiety. were being depressed. You would have been yelling at me. I can't do this. I don't e you wouldn't have even gone to the event. No. But in sharing the story of where you were, and sometimes we're ashamed of where we were. Yeah. But we have to share that because we need to remind ourselves of where we came from. But then it also inspires other people to know that, hey, this is where I was and this is where I'm There's at. There's hope and there's hope. We need hope. We need something to look forward to. Yeah. So let's get into this week's subscriber of the week. Now the subscriber of the week generally comes from our Facebook group, but if you are not a member of Facebook, that is okay. okay. Send your stories to stories at twocrazyketos.com. And we understand some people don't want to be on Facebook, but if you are on Facebook, please go join our Facebook support group. There are awesome people in there, moderators. There's no keto police. There's no pushing of a bunch of multi-level marketing nope. things. People sharing their stories, recipes, deals they find, inspiring each other, helping motivate each other. And that's what it's all about. So Community. please jump in there and share your story. And this week's comes from Kristen. Hey, Kristen. And Kristen says, I've been on keto for a little over three months now, and I've lost 22 pounds. Way to go. Along with bringing my A1C from 9.1 to a 5.3. Wow. All of these numbers are amazing, but it really did not feel real until my mother showed me a picture she had on her phone of my pre-keto days. The difference is so great, it really feels amazing. Wow. Is that not amazing? I love that she's got carbs on one side, keto on the other. Is that not because, amazing? Because what a difference. I mean, you look absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, well, look at her skin is just glowing. Yeah. It's not, because that's the thing. It's not just that you've changed the tag in the back of your shirt to a smaller size. Right. It's everything right. I mean it's your hair and it's your skin and it's your internal organs and it is you know your your pain in your feet being gone and right. I mean there's just so much that it's like yeah the smile on your face becomes so authentic that's right because you genuinely feel good all over yeah. Now we do have one more subscriber of the week and this week's is Jean. Hey Jean. Jean wrote Joe and Rachel, here's the beginning of my story. Back in 2010, I began my first keto diet under the supervision of my cardiologist after I had a cardiac incident. Oh wow. I started at 311 pounds and over the next 15 months, I lost 106 pounds and went from walking a two wow. mile benefit run sponsored by my cardiologist medical group to running three marathons and many half marathons. Jean. No mind you when I say running, I mean a mix of moderate jog and walking, but I finished each race I entered. Wow. Well, by the end of 2013, I was diagnosed with severe degenerated cervical discs and was told to stop running. Here's where my weight plan tanked because I could and did still eat most anything. And of course the weight started returning. At my new peak, the weight of 285 pounds, I restarted a self-defined modified keto diet. Okay. And I got down to 260 when I found your YouTube channel. As of this morning, day four of the keto life cycle, I am down to 248.2 yes. pounds and four inches in my waist. Wow. My wife and I are fully committed to change our lifestyle so we can live a long and healthy life. I am so proud Thank of you. Thank you for the added motivation to get back on track. And as a side note, I've lost 17 pounds since I first tuned into your channel 
and we now subscribe to the 60 Meal Chow Club. That is so exciting, Jean. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that and letting us be a part of your journey. Yeah. That is so incredible. Now, before we do get into the YouTube comments, I do wanna say that this is going to be doing the regular premiere at 10 a.m. on Monday. And we are going to be on the road on the way home. So there is a chance that we don't have good internet and it comes in and out and we're not gonna be able to be in the live chat. But we're gonna ask you guys, you're a family, you're a community, talk to each other yes. during the premiere. If we can be in there, we're gonna we'll do, do our, our best. level best. If we can't be, if we get booted out, please continue the conversation with everybody and we will see everybody during our regular Thursday night live stream at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, Eastern. time. Okay, first comment over on YouTube is from Tara. Hey Tara. She said, where do we share our stories at? Oh, that's a good question. You can send them to stories at twocrazyketos.com. Mm -hmm. um, you can also share them in our Facebook family group. And some people even actually add it as a comment on YouTube. Yeah, now the only thing we do ask you to not do is send them to us through Facebook Messenger we tend to not notice that you know yeah. you have a lot of different you know social media accounts and the ones that we really like to monitor are our emails it's easier we don't overlook them they pop in there especially if you send it to stories because that doesn't get overloaded with like requests from companies and right. spam stories doesn't get any of that stuff so if you send us something at the stories email we're pretty much guaranteed to see it. So that if you don't want to go through Facebook, that is the best way to get a hold of us for that. Yeah. So the next comment is from Jean. Hey Jean, they say, hi, I started keto February, 2019. Starting weight was 190 pounds down to 135 pounds now. Have been off all blood pressure medication for six months. Wow, that is so awesome. That is incredible. Congratulations, Jean. Now we do want to say, we are not doctors or nurses or health professionals of any kind. And anything advice that we give you Look is, at my sparkly hat. is based on uh, anything that we've experimented on ourselves or what we've learned from the actual health professionals. And when you see somebody or we tell you, hey, we're off of medication, we did that on our own and not necessarily from because somebody else told us to do it other than a medical professional. Yeah. Okay, so the next one is from Catherine. Hey, Catherine. Catherine said, super excited about the beef, butter, bacon, and yeah. eggs challenge. I figured out my macros to make a meal out of all four and then split nice. them between two meals for the day. That will probably be my go-to for most days, keeping it simple. That is awesome. Great plan. Except for, I want you to throw all your macros out the window because the whole point of this challenge is you can eat as much as you want, as many times as a day as you want. Why are we doing it that way? So that we get away from our fear of food. My brain wants to disconnect as soon as I hear that. As much as you want, Because right? that is absolutely against the grain right. of how I think. Because of so many years of yo-yo dieting, I feel like I have to have some sort of like deprivation or it's not going to work. Yes. And I'm putting a lot of faith and trust in Dr. Barry. In Dr. Barry that it's like, okay, you're saying I can eat a bunch of this. Yes. And I'm I'm thinking I'm supposed to eat I'm supposed to be happy when I am hungry. Yes. That's what I'm supposed to do. That's what's natural is I'm supposed to be like arr, 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 in my stomach and that is supposed to be like health. Right. And so this is the opposite of that. Yes. I'm a little scared myself. And, and honestly, listen, we're not at the weight or the body composition that we want to be at. No. Honestly, I'm up about 15 pounds from my lowest weight for a COVID weight, obviously. Right. I'm not happy with my body composition. Now, again, Dr. Barry's saying, don't worry about the scale. We're going to get on the scale once at the beginning. We're going to get on to the end. And I am putting it away and throwing all the batteries where Rachel can't find them because I know both of us. If we get on the scale in five days and we see a number up, we're going to quit. We will. So we are going to go by simple measurements. We're not even going by the mirror because the scale is the devil and, and the, the mirror, mirror is, is a, liar. a liar. So we're going to go by our clothes fitting and measurements and and we're gonna be upfront and honest with you guys and I'm a little terrified to be doing this because when he says eat as much as you want and I'm gonna take him up on that mm -hmm. and you can eat as many days as you want when we're just today gonna give a talk on what do they tell you to do calorie restrict you're supposed to calorie restrict you're supposed to be cutting down food and he's going no no eat more 
And also, by the way, you can eat as many times as you want. And all you ever hear from people, you want to lose weight, you got to do One time intermittent a day. fasting. You got to do an 18-6. You got to do a 24. You got to do an OMAD. And he's saying, I don't care if you eat 10 times a day. You just got to keep it to beef, butter, pork, and eggs. All right. That's, so we're going to do, do it. do it. I'm going to encourage you guys to do it. I know it's a hard. Take this leap of faith and try it. Okay, next one is from Yarn About Sandy. Hey, Sandy. They say keto meatloaf, but I'm turning that into meatballs with the dry Parmesan cheese and shredded cheese with seasonings and sugar-free barbecue sauce. Do you have a video explaining this beef, bacon, butter, and eggs challenge? Sounded like you can have different parts of the cow. So do you get different parts of the pig too, like sausage? Oh, and Swiss cheese is awesome. Oh man, you had me till Swiss cheese, Sandy. So yeah, we've already explained it. So basically you can have any part of the beef that you want. You can have any part of cow. pork you want. You can have eggs and you can have butter. So that's what we can have. But you can have any part of the pig or the pork or whatever you want to call it, as much as you want any part so long as you're not adding sauce and a bunch of so, carby spices so no honey glazed ham yes yeah so we're gonna stick to you can have pork chops you can have baby back ribs you can have spare ribs you can have shredded pork without With any barbecue sauce, sauce. yeah so, that's any hard. of that stuff next one is from patty hey patty patty said oh my yes after being good i step on a scale and i am usually disappointed step on a scale after a couple of days of what i consider bad days I'm down. So you are right. The scale is a big fat liar. Well, and you know, you, I, I've always called it the scale is the devil because mm -hmm. you don't ask the devil what kind of day you're going to have because he's always going to say, it's going to be lousy. You probably won't accomplish what you, you know, want to do. He's never going to speak life into you, right? Because he's That's the right. devil. So when you step on the scale, it's not going to tell you the whole story about the inside character of yep. yourself. It's not going to talk to your potential. Yep. Um, it's not going to help perpetuate your health goals. You're going to stand on that scale. And if you're like me, it's either going to tell you you're not good enough. You've mm -hmm. been better in the past. You probably aren't moving forward. It's going to point to like, well, what does another person that's your age and your height, what, what does their scale number look like? Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's really hard for me to, to come away from the scale and feel good about myself in any way. When we were um, touring the Kentucky Derby Museum, they had um, a, a little um, display about um, jockeys mm -hmm. and how they have to be super light. Otherwise, they will hinder the thoroughbred that right. they're racing with. And so they're like, hey, see where you would measure up. And there's a giant scale in the middle of the museum, a public scale. And it says, you know, jump on and, and weigh yourself. And of course, Bronson, mm -hmm. you know, jumps right on. And, and me and the other ladies, it's like we didn't even want to acknowledge that that thing, that Existed. was the elephant in the middle of the room. And I thought, well, there's no way I can weigh myself because I can't strip down naked in That's this right. place. And I don't weigh unless I don't even have earrings on. You know, I'm taking my ring off because maybe now I'm going to be worried that like it'll be off because now I have fingernails and right. that's going to weigh at least a pound or two. Right. So that was the most unnerving that was the scariest thing I've ever seen in a museum. The scale in the middle and like public. Right. Uh, next one is from Kai. Hey Kai. Kai said, always read the labels. I made a PSMF bread using keto chow and it was delicious and it was sweet, but I felt peculiar. When I checked the sweetener that I used, it had stevia, erythritol wow. and sugar. Everything went into the trash. I wasted my keto chow, which was pumpkin caramel spice. Ugh. I have totally been there too, where mm. we were like super confident, especially if something has like keto all over it. We've really learned. You almost have to scrutinize it more right. when so, when a package says it's got, you know, it's keto yep. because I'm like, all right, keto, that's for me. Put it in the cart, buy it. We get it home and it's like, that's not what I wanted. Yeah. Like there's a bunch of wonky ingredients. It's very frustrating. I am going to say if you're going to buy sweetener, we highly suggest you buy it on Amazon. Yeah. The, I, the Anthony's brand is always good. 
if you're looking in Walmart, the only one I'm going to really trust is Swerve because I know Swerve is not mixing it with a bunch of dextrose yeah. or sugar or anything like that. I have like hairs going up my nose from my mustache. Fun. Okay, we have uh, Sarah. Hey, Sarah. Is the next one. She says, I always check three times the first time because I move it. It's about five pounds more than the second and third She's time. About the scale. And if the second and third time is crazy, then I know I have to change the battery. <laughs> I never check my weight every day or I'd go crazy if I gained. I love I love hearing people's experiences and I cry to not sure if it's because of the content or I tend to cry when others cry or both. I'm sorry because I am I'm definitely a crier. It helps me stay strong and know that I'm not the only one with struggles. That's why I love your channel because other channels on Facebook say they don't want to hear that you slipped or you have people criticize you on what you're eating instead of just being supportive and tell you why it's not good for you. Um, I've seen uh, them do it on other posts on other channels, which when I see that, I tend to get out of that group because no one needs that. Thank you for all you do and all the information without judgment. Well, thank you so much. Thank you very much. What we a really, high praise. Listen, we're all on a different journey. And that's again, what we talked about here or what we're gonna be talking about later on today is that we're about making our journey ours. Yeah. We'll make it yours and we're all gonna struggle. And we're gonna be real with you. We're, listen, we're not where we wanna be. And we do have struggles. We have different struggles between the two of us. You know, Rachel may struggle with sweet things. I struggle with eating way too much cheese and way too many nuts. But, but we all struggle with different things. And we're gonna tell you when we're struggling on something. I think it's important for us and, and us too, because you know, sometimes with social media, you, you're not able to convey the tone mm -hmm. of what you're typing in. And, and I think it's, it's really important for us to remember and Keto Palooza helps remind us that, you know, I mean, any kind of in-person meetup helps you to remember there's human beings on the other side of that comment or the other yeah. side of what's, you know, the exchange. And I never want to be that person that's like, well, if you're not going to do it this way, then just stop what you're doing and what have them go back to the other way of eating and possibly, you know, well not even possibly, right. really actually put their health and future in jeopardy. Like people, human beings are too precious for us to to, to do that to. And that's why it really upsets us when we see people go, well, I'm keto. Well, I'm ketovore. Well, I'm carnivore. It's like we're trying to one up each other and I'm we're supposed to be one big community. And that's yeah. why we love and continue to use Dr. Barry's term. We're eating the proper human diet. Right. What is that? Ancestrally, eating mostly meat, not eating all the carbohydrates, and whether you want to do keto, you want to do carnivore, you want to do ketovore, whatever it is, we're eating the proper human diet. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and take a quick commercial break and come back with a few Facebook comments. Hello from Kentucky, we're still here. Yeah, another 24 hours, then we have to drive home. Loving it being here. Okay, so first Facebook comment is from Karina. Hey Karina. Karina said, should I be concerned if my ketones go up to a five? Well, I mean, if you're type one diabetic. Yes, you might want to be concerned. I mean, we're not medical professionals, obviously. Or doctors or health professionals or nurses or anything like that. And she's wearing a sparkly hat. I mean, Clearly. come on. I mean, I, I, I'm wearing a hat with a cowboy on it. I mean, I keep, I keep casting like glitter on you. So uh, it depends on where you are. If you're just finishing an extended fast and you haven't eaten for say 72 hours. I've had ke high ketones. You might be okay. Uh, I would really watch everything, uh, but one thing I am going to say is we are not big like, hey, you have to have high ketones. In my personal opinion, high ketones has nothing to do with fat burning. It has nothing right. to do with how much weight you are going to lose. And I'll be honest, we're not really going to check our ketones. We may check it once or twice during the beef, butter, bacon, and egg, but I can tell you even deep into it, I'd be shocked if my ketones are over a 0 .5, 0 0.7. But if I'm eating pretty much zero carb, what do you think I'm burning if I'm not eating carbs? Fat. Fat. So would you rather be burning fat, your dietary fat and your Body man fat. boobs? Oh, that's cute. Or do you want to burn ketones? Ketones are going to give you heightened energy, but that's not necessarily meaning you're burning a bunch of your body fat. Well, that's why it doesn't matter if you're even at a point three. Well, and I'd be interested, like, are you taking exogenous ketones mm -hmm. where, where you're, you're drinking it yes. or something so that, that, that you're getting a higher level. Yeah. 
But again, if you're a type one diabetic, high ketones definitely can be an issue because of ketoacidosis and things like that. But if you're just on the keto diet, I'm to stop focusing on ketones and start focusing on fat loss. Okay, so the next one is from Anita. Hey Anita, she says, so proud of myself. First trip on keto, have my three-year-old granddaughter with me. Stopped to get her dinner, um, but I didn't order anything despite the smells and temptation. Asked myself, is it worth it? And the answer was no. Got back in the car and ate my turkey and cheese roll-ups. I was full, no belly aches, no guilt. My first keto non-scale victory. That is awesome. That is a huge one because yeah, there is so many, I mean, that is such a victory. I love that you're, you're celebrating that for yourself because that really is so important. Just because we stop someplace or do something or like we're holiday shopping, doesn't mean I have to pick up something That's at right. the mall, in a restaurant, you know, if I'm meeting somebody or they have stuff out at work. I don't have to take it. It's not, I'm not legally required to, to have to have it. So that is so awesome. And then you got to enjoy time with your grandbaby and then get back in the car and stick to your plan. And again, even if you do want to get something, you don't want to feel left out. Like when yeah. our kids were little, we used to have a backpack filled with toys. So when everybody else was getting a brand new toy in the gift shop, we're like, here you go. Here's something. Right? So you still want something pretty much every place you stop, like whether it be a gas station, we talk about it in our talk today, a gas station, a truck stop, a restaurant, you can get some pork rinds. Right. You can get beef jerky, you can get hard boiled eggs, you can get a steak. There's something. There's always something. You just have to be willing to have the willpower to not have the junk. So you can do hard things. Yep. So our next one is from Ellen. Hey Ellen. Ellen said, quick question. Does Redmond season salt in hot water break a fast? I can't find a carb count on it. I am putting a teaspoon in a cup of water to drink. Yes, it's yummy. Yes, it is yummy. That is something that we started doing a long time ago. If you're on a fast and you want something with flavor, take a teaspoon of that Redmond. Yep. And here's the good news. Redmond, at one point, somehow the formulation got changed and it was good. It was good. But it was not as good as the original formulation. Well, Redmond is now back to the original formulation which I think is much better. I love it and I love that company, that mentality where it's like, okay, if we have to change back, Not good like, enough. We're, we're fine with that, yeah. right? Usually it's like, oh no, now that we've done, we, we're moving forward in this way, we can't ever go back and revisit stuff. So, but they're not like that. Yeah. It's like, okay, you, we like the old one better. So let's go back. Yeah. Now there is a link down below. If you're interested in the Redmond season salt, I know it is back in stock. Delicious. And I, I think the lemon pepper and all that is coming back in stock as so well. So good. So use that link down below. And if you use the coupon code two crazy ketos, you'll get 15% off your order. Yeah. So the next one is from Robin. Hey Robin, she says, I woke up smiling this morning. Yesterday I had two non-scale victories. I bought a pair of shorts one year ago without trying them on. Well, you know the story. They weren't just too small. They were small. <laughs> I chalked it up to there were they were not sized right. I kept them anyway and have tried them on several times. Each time I said to myself, almost keep going. Yesterday they fit. They fit good and comfortable. And on top of that, I went down a belt loop. Woohoo! Hello, Lucas. What's Lucas. up? It's Holly. It's Holly and Look Steve. at that. We're heading okay, over. Okay, we, we need to finish up because they're about to barbecue. Yeah, they're no, about they're to they're going to barbecue. So Yum. keto on the couch is going to have to end. Yes, for some meat. Robin, congratulations on that. That is amazing. That. It, it's, so go, awesome. it's so awesome. It's so awesome when you like put on a pair of clothes and you're like, oh, this was supposed to be too tight on me. Well, and here's the thing, don't don't get depressed. I love how you said almost keep going. It's not like, well, if this doesn't fit right now or if I've even waited five or six months and it's still not quite there yet, throw it away. No, stick with it. It's mm. a great, that is a better guide for how you're doing than the scale. Yeah. So much better. Yep. Okay, so the next one is from Karen. Hey, Karen. Karen said, how do I find Joe's recipe for jalapeno poppers? Super simple. Uh, we don't have a recipe on the website, but we have done it in several vlogs, and I'll link one of those vlogs over Rachel's head, but this is, we have a super simple recipe. We keep you're it easy. get some jalapenos, you're gonna slice them in half, 
and then scoop out all the seeds. We use a spoon and we do it underwater wearing gloves because otherwise you're gonna take your finger, you're gonna touch your eyes and they're gonna burn for hours. Right. So we do it underwater to make sure we get all the seeds out. Once in a while I'll leave one or two seeds because I want the heat, but for the most part we get all the seeds, all like the stringy white stuff out of there. Then you're gonna take some Philadelphia cream cheese. Why Philadelphia? Because it's one of the cleanest ones you can find in most grocery stores in Walmart. Mm -hmm. About a half an ounce, maybe a little bit more. So fill the cavern. Fill it up. There's, there's, you know, you have. If you go a half an ounce, you're gonna get about 13 to 16, uh, you know, jalapeno poppers out of a brick of cream cheese. Just depends on how big your jalapenos are. But fill it up with cream cheese, and then wrap it in bacon. Mm -hmm. Super easy. Now we put them in the air fryer at 380 degrees for 20 minutes, 20 to 23 minutes. But we like crispy bacon. If you like it not so crispy. Just cook it a little bit less. Now we do like the thick cut bacon. Yeah, we use like the Smithfield, the really thick cut bacon. Next one is from James. Hey James, he says, Nisha last night brought up a valid point. By reintroducing keto bread, even if it's Maria's bread, invites the same demons we're trying so hard to fend off. Are we just trying to justify it? But Maria makes a point too. Food should taste good, mind over matter. I think it really depends on what you struggle with. So yeah, and, and he did ask for discussion, and I think it's something that Nisha was talking about as well, and I mentioned it to her when we were hanging out with her the other day. Like, you did bring up some good points, and we say the same thing. It's, you need to know you. Yeah. If it is something that you struggle with, if you feel that eating something that is so similar to bread, whether or not it's bread or not, the bottom line is the ingredients in it are super clean, if you're following Maria's recipe, because it's egg whites, yeah. that's what it is. It's egg whites and egg white powder, which is powdered egg whites. It's super clean and it's not bread. But if the whole idea of having that carrier, of having that texture, of thinking you're eating bread is gonna bring you back to eating bread, then don't do it. Yeah. I, and I will be, this is, this is almost something I don't even want to admit, there were times where we would go to a church and they were using bread as communion. Mm -hmm. And I was afraid to take it because I was so afraid that that little piece of bread for communion was gonna trigger me to want bread. Isn't that amazing? But that's how worried we were. Like I know what it feels like to be scared. I mean, the, the most recent incident was when we tested those Reese's peanut butter cups because that really was, and you could see in the video, I mean, I had an emotional yeah. response to it. And I thought, oh my goodness. And we threw the whole bag away. Yeah, we didn't give them to our nephews. We're I like, mean, nobody in our family is that, eating these. But that was one of those things that I, I was scared to even have it. Like, it was like we threw it in the trash and like poured Dawn dish water over it. Yeah, because you wanted to like go dig them out. It, it really, because that's what I struggle with. And we did receive an email from somebody that said, you know, I would ne I, I'm able to eat it and keep it within portion. Mm -hmm. But with that said, I struggle with anything that's a lookalike to a potato because that is my, that is my problem. Right. So, or rice. So even a cauliflower rice, I can't be having cauliflower rice right. because it reminds me too much of rice. And it's something that Dr. Sivas talks about a lot too. And he said like, you know what, a lookalike brownie it's not good. Why? Because it triggers it for a lot of people. For me, I'm fine to have it because I also don't need a lot of them. But there are other people when you give them a keto brownie, they're going to eat the good. entire plate. And we have things like that. For example, one of my favorite recipes that we created is the cheddar che the cheddar bay biscuit lookalike from so Red Lobster. They're we, delicious. We we almost never make them. And if we do make them, we make single ones. Why? I will eat 20 of them. Same thing with our Cheez-It crackers. They're fantastic. I eat an entire batch in a sitting. So for me, if I'm gonna do that, it's for a party, it's for a get together, but I don't make them on a regular basis. Not that they're bad, and a lot of people can have it and eat six or seven crackers, but not me. I'm gonna eat the entire batch. So you have to know what is going to trigger you? And if it's going to trigger you, whether it's super clean or not, don't have it. If, even if everybody else is doing it. Yep. Right. So we have one more and it is from Peggy. Hey Peggy. Peggy said, wow, this was an emotional video I'm referring to last, last week's Keto on the Catch. It definitely was. She said, I really felt Bridget's post. I have been keto for three years and besides weight loss and other medical benefits, I have learned about the huge benefit. 
that have been set seen with low carbon MCT oils on treating and reversing dementia. Yeah. My mom was diagnosed about 10 years ago with Alzheimer's and has been in a nursing home with advanced Alzheimer's for the last five years. I so wish I had learned of this in time to save my mom, but I cannot change the past. And as you have said, now that I know better, I do better. Yeah. And I know that my mom would be so happy to know that I'm doing everything I can to prevent this same fate and educating my kids. Thank you both for all of you do. It is so important and such a blessing to so many. Always remember that. We love you both. And I'm, I'm actually crying because I lost my dad in 2003 to brain cancer. And it was three months from diagnosis to death. And I think about what could have happened if we would have known about keto back then. And your grandmother died from complications from Alzheimer's. And um, it's been a, really since she passed away, it has been such a great fear of my mother's that she was going to follow suit and that I was also, um, my grandmother's sisters also suffered with this. So it, it almost felt like a generational curse. Like this is, this is what we have. And, and I was talking to a family today about when you go to the doctor and they're like, tell me your family history, that it's almost like as you're checking the boxes, you are saying like, yep, this is my future. I am future heart attack. I am type two diabetes. I am Alzheimer's. I'm, and it's almost like you're taking on those labels. And since keto, it's like, no, I'm unchecking that box. Sure. There is an opportunity for me to do things differently, this is what my mother and my father and my grandparents and my aunts and uncles would want for me, the best. And we don't have to have the same, you know, outcome that they did. We do know better and we will do better. And we don't have to feel guilty. Um, that same family that I was talking to this morning on our walk shared how they have an eight year old and an 11 year old and how they are swapping out things, you know, swapping out the chocolates and the sweets for keto versions. And I was like, so excited for them. So even though our children didn't get to experience that because when we raised our boys who are all 20 years old and older, we weren't making those healthy swap outs yep. for low sugar or no sugar options. But I get excited seeing that this next generation, mm -hmm. they will. And like we, th th our biggest thing that we say now is when you know better, you do better. I can't do anything about the past in the way I raised my children. But I don't want to say you can't fix the past sorry. because you can I fix you. the past you're, as your watch says, I'm right. sorry. You can fix the past on what you did to your own body. Yeah, you can. And that's what's awesome. I beat up my body. I put my body through heck. I, oh my gosh, when I think about what I put in my body, but I've been fortunate enough after finding the proper human diet that I've been able to reverse some of the damage that I did to my body. Now we can't fix the fact that we fed our body years ago, but we can still correct it. And it's when you know better, you do better. And so that's why it's so important. So let's do better this week. That's gonna be the end of this week's Keto on the Couch. We need to jump in the shower. We're so happy you guys joined us. It's, bad. It's, it's pretty bad. We're so happy you guys joined us. We look forward to seeing you guys hopefully in the live chat when we premiere this. And if not, we will see you on Thursday during our live stream. Uh, let us know down in the comments section, are you joining us for the beef, butter, bacon, and egg yeah. challenge? Also, let us know if you got a creamy and share all of your delicious recipes please. down there. If you come up with a delicious recipe, please go ahead and share it. You can send it to either Rachel at 2crazyketos.com or Joe at 2crazyketos.com. And if it's a cool recipe, when the beef, butter, bacon, and egg challenge is over and we use it in a vlog. You get full credit. We will give you full credit and shout out. And again, we get to share delicious recipes with the rest of the community because that's what 2 Crazy Ketos is all about. Yep. If you like seeing videos like this, check out some of the other videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.